quasi here. And in this video, I want to share with you the concept of semen retention and why I stopped doing it and how I became really dogmatic about it and how it actually started to take my life to a detrimental turn. If you've been practicing semen retention or you've been thinking about it, I really do think you should hear this first about someone who's actually tried it before. And um, you can also check my previous videos from like six, seven months ago uh, about my experiences about it if you go back to my channel. But I want you to stick around to the very end of this video because I'm gonna share with you the key that makes not just semen retention but the whole concept of semen retention actually work. So without further delay, let's just get started. Now, the concept of semen retention is such that when most people learn about it nowadays, we become very, very dogmatic about it. It starts to run our lives, right? So you learn about it and then you'll start practicing it and then this practice itself will take as much importance as when you, you know, try to quit porn or you try to, you know, do no fab. So the level of importance that this activity gets is just as detrimental as you, you know, uh, relapsing. So the effect of it, I hope this is making sense, the effect of it is just, it's the same, but it's just in a different pole right now. So for example, whenever you put too much importance on something, right, it will ultimately start to control you. So if you look at a celebrity when they confront a fan, what happens is the celebrity starts to control the fan because the fan is like, oh, this celebrity is on a pedestal, you know, they're so much better than me. And this is when the celebrity, the, the fan falls into the celebrity's frame. So when that happens, now the celebrity, whatever they say, they'll, you know, control the fan like a puppet on a string. So just like that, any single thing in your life, whenever you put it on a pedestal, it has no choice but to look down upon you. When you put your relationships on a pedestal, anything happens, you you know, clutch it closely and you're like, oh shit, you know, I don't want to lose this. Or anything happens in your business, you clutch it closely, you're like, oh no, I don't want that bad thing to happen. And then it starts to dictate your actions. You become panicky, you don't become relaxed about it, okay? So then it starts to run your life. How is this relevant to semen retention? When you start this journey of semen retention, you get super dogmatic about it. It starts to run your life. All you can think of is not relapsing. All you can think of is not like falling back to your old patterns. And when you resist it that much, it's like doing a crash diet, right? Like eventually you're gonna relapse because you put so much meaning onto it. So that's essentially what happens when we, when most people start a journey like asceticism or semen retention. Now, the, the real concept behind semen retention, this is important to understand because if you don't understand the actual concept, you're gonna get lost in doing the actions, okay? So it's never really the action that gets you the results. It's the intention behind the action, okay? So um, the, the concept behind it, the, the intention behind semen retention is that nowadays, too much mental energy is directed towards thoughts of sex or thinking about sex, right? There's no sex really, it's just sexuality, right? So too much thought energy is attributed to sex or resisting sex. <laughs> so this then becomes a problem as well, right? Because it doesn't matter which direction, it, like, like what the, um, it doesn't matter what the nature of your thoughts are, it's the content of it. Either you're resisting sex or you're thinking about sex, it's the same thing altogether, okay? So the content of it is sex in general. And when you focus too much on it, then it starts to control you. This is why for most people, sex is running their lives, right? So I wanna give you a couple of quotes that famous people, successful people, and how they perceive sex, how they view sex. Recently I was watching a, an interview with Elon Musk when he talks about the concept of semen retention. Elon Musk is now the richest person in the world. He's worth $200 billion, right? That's insane. Um, but he basically says that, and I quote, uh, truly stupendous amounts of thinking has gone into sex without any purpose. So really the purpose of sex is to procreate. And he says, truly stupendous amounts of thinking has gone into sex without any purpose. And this is true, right? So it's not semen retention or not doing it or whatever. 
right? Like it's the actual fact that you are thinking about it too much. Even when you're resisting it, you're actually thinking about it. You just say to yourself, oh no, I'm resisting it now, right? And then Sadhguru also says that sex in the body is fine, but when sex enters the mind, it becomes a perversion, it becomes evil, it becomes a sickness. Just like that money in the pocket is fine, but when it enters your mind, it becomes a problem. So this goes to show that when you attribute too much mental energy to it, there is less mental energy available for you to channel to other areas of your life. So if you see that semen retention is becoming this big monster for you, maybe it's time to quit, right? What's really worked for me, from my personal experience, I can only share with you what's worked for me, is that you, know, you, you do it, but you maintain a balance of it, okay? You don't become so dogmatic about resisting it, or you don't become so crazy about just going ahead and doing it in the first place. So you find a sweet spot that will work for you, okay? And the key I've found is to, you know, not watch pornography because that will completely ruin your mind. And your dopamine receptors will just get completely ruined and wired to seeking that short-term gratification. Okay, I made a video on this and the effects, the harmful effects of short-term gratification. If you click up here, you'll find that. But essentially, pornography wires you, just like going on Instagram, just like going on TikTok all the time, it wires you for shorter term gratification. In a world full of distractions, one who can focus will win, okay? So there's that. Uh, quitting pornography is number one. Number two, not excessively you know, engaging in sexual activity or masturbation, that'll help you as well. And you know, if you have a partner, don't be afraid to you know, ejaculate, whatever it is. You know, don't be so dogmatic about it. If you do it once a week, twice a week, that's fine. This is a taboo topic to talk about, but I truly believe that people should understand this and understand what, you know, why you're even doing semen retention and the concept of transmuting your sexual energy. But in essence, the idea is to have more thought energy available to allocate to things that actually matter in your life. Okay, not thinking about sex 24 seven. This is why Napoleon Hill, in his book, Think and Grow Rich, he talks about sex, uh, semen retention and how people who went over the age of 50 uh, started to become successful. And it's not because they stopped having sex, they just stopped thinking about sex. Their biology stopped working about, you know, thinking about reproducing and they could now allocate this energy to other things in their lives. Okay, so I hope this video was valuable for you. I'm going to reference some videos that I talked about uh, in semen retention in the, in the comment section below. I'm going to pin it, but let me know what your thoughts are. I tried this new style. Let me know what this, if you like this, if the audio quality is good, um, if you want me to make more short videos like this, okay? But till next time, peace.